Now we will do the knees examination. I'll wash my hand. I'll go through the same steps, look, feel, move, special test, and then assessing the function. We can start the knees examination while the patient is on a standing position, sitting, or lying supine. Here I will start by uh, examining the knees while the patient is on supine position, starting with look. I'm looking to both knees. There is a scar on the anterior surface of the right knee. No wasting of the muscles, no swelling, no rashes, no ulcers, and no erythema. The popliteal fossa or the posterior surface of the knees, I can't see it well while the patient is in lying position, so I will see it once I will ask the patient to stand up at the end of the examination. Then I will feel the knees. First, I'm looking for the hotness. I'm comparing the temperature of the knee with the thigh, assuming that the thigh temperature is normal, there is no hotness. Then I will look for tenderness. I will uh, examine the suprapatellar area, no tenderness, prepatellar, then infrapatellar, over the patellar tendon, then over the joint plateau or joint line, medially and laterally, and then over the area of anserine bursa. The same I will do on the left side, suprapatellar, prepatellar, infrapatellar, then over the joint plateau, medial and lateral, then over the anserine bursa. So there is no tenderness. Now I will examine for effusion. The mild, uh, for mild to moderate effusion, we will do what we call milking test or a sweep test or bulging test. I will assume that the fluid is in the medial compartment. I will push it from the medial compartment to the lateral compartment. Then I will push it again from the lateral side medially. So I will evacuate the medial compartment with palms of my hands. I will keep my left hand as a dam. I will complete the circle with the dorsum of my right hand. I will see the bulge of the fluid if there is any. Evacuation, then I will put the, my left hand as a dam, then I will complete the circle by pushing from the lateral side with my dorsum of the right hand. For the left knee, I will evacuate the medial compartment by the dorsum of my hands. I will keep my left hand as a dam, then I will complete the circle with palm of my right hand to push for the fluid from the lateral side to bulge uh, medially. For the large effusion, we will do what we call patellar tap. I will evacuate the suprapatellar pouch, then I will push the patella with my thumb or my index finger. Normally, the patella should not move because it is attached to the femoral condyle. If the patella is going away from my thumb, then it will come back and touch my thumb. This means that the patient is having positive patellar tab and he has large effusion. The same I will do on the left side. So this patient patellar tab test is negative. Then I'll proceed to move the knees. Can you bend your knee, please? Flexion and extension. The other one, left side, flexion and extension, he has normal flexion and extension of both knees actively, then I will do the passive movement. And while I'm doing the passive movement, I should examine for crepitus, which is indicating underlying degenerative joint disease or osteoarthritis. Then we will do the special test, or what we call a stability test. The stability test, we have tests for the cruciate ligaments, lateral and medial collateral ligaments, and for the menisci. For the anterior cruciate ligament, you will bend the knee 90 degrees, then you will fix the foot, then you should pull the proximal part of the tibia toward you. If the knee is moving or there is lag or space, this means that there is anterior cruciate ligament tear or injury. Push it posteriorly. If it is moving posteriorly, this means that there is posterior ligament cruciate ligament tear or injury. For the medial and lateral collateral ligaments, you will take the foot of the patient below your axilla, you will bend the knee for uh, 30 degrees, then push from the lateral side. If it is opening medially, this means that there is 
medial collateral ligament injury or tear and push it medially to the lateral side. If it is opening from the lateral side, this means the patient is having lateral collateral ligament tear or injury. The same you will do on the left side, anterior and posterior drawer test and medial and lateral collateral ligament test. For the menisci, you should do what we call macmary test. Macmary test asks the patient to flex the knee maximum he or she can do, then do rotation. One time lateral rotation and one time medial rotation to stress the horns of the menisci to induce the pain. This is what we call macmary test. And then you will do it in the other side in the same way. The Ablis test, which is the other test for the menisci, you should ask the patient to be in his bone position with 90 degree flexion, then push the foot and rotate, one time medially and one time laterally to induce the uh, tenderness and the pain of the uh, menisci. Then we will ask the patient to stand up to assess the function, and before that, can you stand up please? Okay, can you stand up please? Yes. Okay. First, I will inspect or look to the popliteal fossa for any scars, any swelling, or baker cyst. Then I will ask the patient to walk to assess the function of the knees and to assess the gait of the patient. Can you walk, please? Okay. Come back, please. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. That's it. At the end, we need to examine one joint above and one joint below, and uh, we need to do the neurovascular examination.